Hi everyone, this is a video on uh, making a um, 100 volt DC to DC booster um, uh, for tube amplifiers. This particular design, you can change some of the components, which I'll explain in the schematic. Uh, can be adjusted to give you higher voltages. I think you can get up to 400 volt with this particular chip. Um, so it's possible to run this on the battery. So the input is 12, output is 100 volt DC, and it can supply um, enough milliamps to power these types of tubes, which are uh, EF95, um, for example, the Mullard M800s or the GE Jan 5654s. So I made this particular board just as a test. I'm going to make it again as part of a, a part of the amplifier circuit with different components which determines the size of the board. I'm trying to make it smaller. So here is the board. I designed this in Easy EDA. I'll go through the schematic later and talk about the components. So the size is 60 mil by 19 mil. Quite a small board. I think I can make it smaller depending on how many more surface mount components I use or if I change the power MOSFET to a smaller one. It all depends. So this is the PCB that I've made. Um, you got the UC384 43B uh, DC to DC converter. These are about quid. So these are branded, not the I think there's a lot of generic stuff you can get. So these are made by On Semi. Then you have the um the power of MOSFET for the switching of the frequency. So the, the this chip here does the um oscillation. It's configured for 75 kilohertz. This is a power MOSFET. It does up to one amp. Obviously, I'm not pulling one amp. Then you have the um, Schottky diode here. Um, this is actually rated for 100 volts. It's running on the limit, so I'm going to order a different surface mount one that's a higher voltage, and then redesign the PCB. Um, this is also rated for one amp. Um, then you have the output caps. It's quite hard to find output caps at high voltage. That's a small size. So these, this, the, all these components from LCSC. So this is a, um, I think a Chinese brand, Wymin. 15 microfarads, 250 volts. Um, for ESR, if I think three and a half to four, um, four ohms, which is quite high, but that's typically what you get when the uh, uh, the farads are low. The input capacitor is a Panasonic one, and it has to be. Low, a, low ESR, so below 68 milliohms. So this particular Panasonic 470 microfarads, 35 volts is um, 40 milliohm. Because I'm going to redesign the circuit, I've got this one. I think it's also Panasonic 470 microfarads, and the because it's polymer, the ESR is um, super low, uh, something like 20 milliohms. Um, I've also got the SMD versions of these in order. So these ones are um, 8 mil wide. The SMD versions are actually shorter, about 10 mil wide. Um, and then you have the inductor, 2020, um, I think it's a millihenry, I can't remember. Um, it's rated for 360 milliamps. So small size because it's a small board and it's more than enough current. So I've got a little um, tube amplifier here with a uh, op amp for the output stage and the input is uh, pre-amplified using the uh, uh, EF95 valves. So I've got a multimeter connected to the output of the 100 volt DC. So this goes, this is the output, this is the 12 volt input. So I'll connect that up and we'll see the, um, the voltage out. Have a listen, see if it's all working. And then um, I'll put the oscilloscope on and have a look at the um, frequency because it is a uh, boosting up using inductor and uh, 75 kilohertz frequency. So I don't expect to see a very smooth um, power output, but it's good enough for, for an amplifier. We'll find out in a bit. Just going to put all this together. Right here you go, connected up. There's the um, 12 volt DC in. So running off the mains, so we'll see um, what sort of mains hum we get on this. Um, it is on the breadboard, so I expect there to be some. It's off at the moment, 
output voltage is whatever that was already in the capacitors. There's always some in the capacitors. Uh, just put it to home by mistake. Um, so we've got an MP3 player connected to this via mobile. I'm just going to turn on the phone. Okay, got a song ready to go. Just going to connect, turn it on. I don't want to electrocute myself, I should say it's possible to get yourself, give us a shock on this. So, there you go, 100 volts stable. And then, I'm just going to connect the headphones up. Headphones in, and then I'm just going to play a song. I can't hear any hum. And it sounds great. I'm just going to bring the headphones closer. So it sounds great, better result than I expected, not bad for this. So this, how much did it cost to make? Um, I'll go through the bill of materials, a um, couple of quid. I think all the components were less than five pounds. I'm fairly certain of it. Or well, put it this way, under 10 pounds, even with the um, PCB made and shipped. Not bad. So I've connected this scope to the output of the booster. I've set the uh, division to 20 milli millivolts. So there's some spikes there. We're, we're looking at 60, 50, 60 millivolt spikes. I think that's okay. I'm not sure. I'm not really into making these sort of amps all the time. It's the first time I'm doing it really. Um, it sounded clean to me. I couldn't hear any hum. Um, Obviously I get ground loops if I touch their components or if I touch my mobile but that could be due to the way this is, it's, you know, it's, it's not grounded properly. Um, when I designed the, the PCB for this, all the different uh, earth points will have a different return path to a common ground. Um, I think that's where the ground loop is coming in. But it looks okay to me, I've got nothing to compare it against. Um, all the components using this are high quality. You can fine tune it even more to get um, a higher frequency and I think you can put more output filters on if you want to do that. It's quite common if you want to smooth, up, smooth out the ripple on um, output supplies, put another inductor in and another capacitor in, or different values of capacitors to smooth it even more. I might do that on the actual amp side, but we'll see. It sounded absolutely fine to me. Um, on to the schematics next. So this is the schematic for the UC384B 100V DC booster. So if you've got the um, the chip here, the version I've chosen here it's got has got the D1R2G on there. It just has a high operating range. I think it goes up to um, 125 degrees, whereas the normal version is up to 85 degrees. It doesn't get hot, I checked. It seems the whole circuit seems to run at room temperature because the the valves on these types of tubes, uh, valves, they don't really draw too much current. I can't remember what it is, it's only a few milliamps. So look, these components are standard for this type of design. Um, like a lot of these capacitors are really for stability, so where possible, try and use um, COG types um, so they don't vary with any temperature changes. Some of them it's not possible, so use um, X7R, they're cheap these days. I think m most of the capacitors were um, 10p or less each. Uh, here you have the um, two of the output capacitors. With uh, two 1 ohm 1206 resistors to reduce the um, do a voltage drop across them. Um, you then have the frequency setting resistor, which along with um, I think this one C2, this capacitor RTCT sets the frequency. So if you have a look, R13 is 5.1 kilo ohms. The C2 is 4.7 nanofarads, so it's roughly about here, which is 75 kilohertz. So that's the frequency this switching um, IC is operating at to generate the pulse on-off pulses 
for the inter inductor and the MOSFET to produce the 100 volts out. This diode, as I mentioned, is really the incorrect voltage rating uh, for an output of this type, 100 volts uh, output with a 100 volt di uh, Schottky diode. You can change it to something else. Uh, it just needs to be a fast one, ideally. Um, this capacitor here, as I mentioned before, needs to be low uh, ESR. And then uh, got the voltage divider. So this is for the feedback. Um, this is what determines the output voltage. So using some calculations, here are the formulas. Um, obviously you need some sort of reference point or an idea, um, depending on what you use, what you're going to get. Um, there's a couple of circuits on the internet you can find. So similar, this this there's different versions of this. So you can find circuits where people use this resistor and this resistor to output voltage for Nixie tubes. So you're using those voltages and calculations. You can then work out what you need to get your VFB. So a VFB of 2.537 with a combination of these resistor values gives you output of 100 volts and these this is what you can use to work it out so if you do change your values sometimes it can be trial and error to try and work out what you're going to get so I chose these specific values these aren't really common resistors but LCSC seem to have just about every type of resistor so 84.5 kilo ohms and a 2.2 kilo ohm voltage divider gives me this exact voltage out I measured it which gives me exactly 100 volts um, so, yeah, his schematic's quite a simple circuit, really, and it works really well. Um, obviously, doing stuff like this is risk of electric shock. You can really push out high voltages. Let's have a look at the bill of materials. So, as you can see, pennies. What's the most expensive thing on here? Looks like the input capacitor because it's Panasonic 27p um, no. uh, the MOSFET it's a 60 not 80 an 80 will work but I use the 60 in the end uh, I'll update the proper bill of materials in the link below um, 76p for the MOSFET um, seems to be the most expensive option yeah so get the PCB probably all under 10 quid so let's have a look at the PCB so it's got a ground plane on both sides um, and then put all the correct gaps in for the tracks uh, all the correct widths for the for the current more than enough really um, some thermal pads here to dissipate power from the uh, MOSFET and it died but really doesn't generate any heat anything this will probably get hot the inductor but again it's got pads I'm going to redesign this gerber here the, I found these pads are slightly offset in the wrong place where you see it go in that's really ideal if you're using a hot air solution to do soldering of surface mount I don't have that I'm using a soldering iron so it would have been great if this pad was just over here um, I might move them would have made it much easier to solder other than that everything else is easy to solder uh, let's have a look at the uh, 3d view uh, how do I do a 3D view? Okay, so as you can see, more or less all the components are accurate in the 3D model. Um, you can see the ground plane, and I've minimized the use of views, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Um, when I redesign this, uh, as part of the main amp, um, it's all everything's going to be a, a surface mount, including the diode and the output and input capacitors. And there will be no headers because it's all part of the main PCB. Um, and I might even replace these resistors. These are in parallel to give you um, two watts. I might just replace it with a single um, two watt resistor. Already have them. Um, not really necessary because a single 2 watt resistor takes up this much space anyway. So, uh, 
that's it. So I'll post all the information below. Um, and I am making other things out of this um, circuit, uh, tube amplifier that's battery operated. Hopefully it works. A lot of it is just designing it, building prototypes. Um, it's quite difficult and, and whether if I've you know if I've designed a PCB and I have it made, I sold in all the components. If I've made a mistake, my schematic, then the whole thing doesn't work, and we're a complete waste of time. I'm not sure if I have the um, patience to you know re fix it and then rebuild it. But this worked first time, which I'm uh, happy about. So thanks for watching.